I'd just like to take a minute to go back through um, S24. Our goal on Friday will be to um, make any changes that we think need to be changed uh, and um, and move the, the bill out of committee. There are two ways we can move the bill out of committee. One is to just simply vote it out. Then it sits on the calendar and then it goes to economic development and then it goes to finance. The other uh, thing that I'm thinking about is after, after we've had our discussion simply to relieve our committee of the bill and send it to economic development where it originally uh, had started. And I've talked with Senator um, Sorokin about doing that and he's, he's fine with that. All right, Jen, do you wanna just quickly uh, remind us of what S24 includes? I... Sure, that would be helpful. All right, uh, yeah, it would be. Are you wanting me to put it up or just describe to you what's in it? Let's, let's put it up. Okay. Nellie has also put it on your committee page if you're we got interested it. in pulling it up. And I will, I will tell you, I understand that the Vermont NAACP is sending us a letter of support for the bill. And uh, there are others who are uh, uh, similarly positioned who may also be um, sending us letters of support. So we'll see that. Okay. So for the record, Jennifer Carby, Legislative Council. Uh, this is S24, an act relating to banning flavored tobacco products and e-liquids. It starts out with a number of findings, um, which we'll just scroll through here. Um, and then it updates the definitions in the, the, in the first case here in the definition of tobacco products is really to um, remove some ambiguities and inconsistencies with the definition in the tax statutes. Um, and then also make some changes to the definition of tobacco substitute, which is the statute's term for electronic cigarettes and um, similar devices, so that it's a little bit broader and um, and captures emerging some emerging products. And then we have the definition of e-liquid, which is the solution, substance, or other material used in or with a tobacco substitute that is heated or otherwise acted upon to produce an aerosol vapor or other emission to be inhaled or otherwise absorbed by the user, regardless of whether it contains nicotine. And so then you'll see the e-liquids term being either introduced or used to replace some various other terms throughout some statutes. Starting with the first, uh, this next one here, which is the license required to sell these products. Um, same thing in this next section, also including tobacco substitutes and e-liquids in this exception uh, about where items can be displayed. Then the proof of age statute, again, adding e-liquids in here. 7 VSA section 1005, this would remove the penalty for possession of tobacco products by minors. Um, so it would then just prohibit the purchase and, mis and the misrepresentation of age for purchasing. Jen. So, it's, so, so what we've, uh, sorry, go ahead, Ruth, and then I'll ask mine. Um, on that, on page eight, <laughs> line yes. 13, it's a very specific question. The sale and purchase of BIDIS. BIDIS is my understanding of the pronunciation. Okay, what is that? <laughs> well, happily for us, it is a defined term in statute, so I'm going to have to pull it up and tell you what it is. But in the beginning of this chapter, 7 BSA chapter 40 in section 1001, BIDIS, and there's also another spelling, B-E-E-D-I-E-S, means a product containing tobacco that is wrapped in tamburni leaf. And then parenthetically, it says diaspyros 
melanoxylin, which I'm probably butchering, but uh, or tender leaf diospyros exculpra, or any other product that is offered to or purchased by consumers as BD spelled this way and BD spelled the other way. Ah. That is the extent of my knowledge. Okay, I've never heard of this thing. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yep. Well, you're not allowed to sell or purchase them currently. <laughs> okay, we'll do. We'll don't. All right. We'll don't. <laughs> yes. <great. laughs> So I was gonna. Uh, uh, that was so. That was exciting. Thank you, Senator Hardy. Um, I do remember a previous conversation about that, but uh, I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> not not this year. Uh, another year. Um, yes, this particular language has been in the statutes longer than I've been working on tobacco stuff, yeah. which isn't all that long, but um, but it's been in here a while. So, the, so we are um, taking out the, the penalty for possession. Yes, this would get rid of the $25 penalty for possession, um, which is in here somewhere. All right. I yes, think there we go, is, in here in yeah, B. Um, so it yeah. gets rid of the civil penalty of uh, $25 civil penalty brought by the, and the Judicial Bureau for possession. It does maintain it for um purchase yeah okay this this is an area that i think economic development well they have a bill on pup purchase use and right possession. they do have a a bill and actually in that bill it would uh i don't know if it's decriminalized because i don't think it's criminal but but unprohibit um the possession of bds because it is uh getting rid of right. all prohibitions on possession. So at least as introduced, it would allow for the possession, but not purchase. Okay. All right, section 1006 is adding the e-liquids to um, the placement of posting of signs in, in uh, retail establishments. Section 1007 adds the e-liquids um, to the prohibition on and, and penalties for selling or furnishing products to minors. And then uh, goes into the compliance testing and then, then updates and corrects the name of the um, reconstituted tobacco evaluation and review board, which became part of the Substance Misuse Prevention Oversight and Advisory Council, along with some other um, boards and councils. Section 1009 makes some updates to the contraband and seizure statute uh, to pull in some of the, um, pull in some conforming changes with other, or provisions with other um, statutes. So it would have the contraband and seizure provisions apply not only to cigarettes and tobacco products that were sold, offered for sale, or possessed for sale in violation of certain statutes, um, but also would add tobacco substitutes and tobacco paraphernalia, and then would add this new e-liquids language as well, and also reflects uh, some of the other sections that prohibit or place limitations on the sale and possession for sale. Um, and then makes a conforming change down here to be to incorporate all of those items. Section 10,000 uh, 1010, 1010 um, is the internet sales provision, and it corrects that or changes that definition or that language around the e-liquids, um, and also adds some of the other uh, types of products into what constitutes a separate violation for separate shipments. And we get to 1012, which is um, currently liquid nicotine packaging, and instead using that new terminology around the e-liquid for consistency. And then finally, we get to the, the new section here, 1013, on the flavored tobacco products, flavored tobacco substitutes, and flavored e-liquids being prohibited. And there we have the definitions, so the characterizing flavor, the flavored e-liquid, the flavored tobacco product and the flavored tobacco substitute and the tobacco retailer. 
then it prohibits anyone from engaging in the retail sale of any flavored tobacco product, e-liquid or tobacco substitute. So again, here it's not the possession, it is the retail sale. It's not even the purchase, it's the, it's the retail sale. Um, no retail sale of any flavored tobacco product, flavored e-liquid or flavored tobacco substitute. And if a retailer or their agent or employee violates the section, the retailer would be subject to a civil penalty, uh, like the, the penalties for the sale to minors. And it would be, again, brought in the Judicial Bureau. That's what it means to be brought in the same manner as for a traffic violation. Then it gives the Judicial Bureau jurisdiction over that uh, new offense and also revises the language of the um, minors to be purchase and not possession. Then we get into some conforming um, revisions elsewhere in the statutes. So this is an existing statute elsewhere in um, Title VII that talks about the penalty provisions that apply to other types of products not applying to violations that are dealt with separately under the tobacco statutes and so adding e-liquids there. Adding e-liquids to the prohibition on the use of certain products on public school grounds. Adds it also to um, the language around the substance misuse advisory, substance misuse prevention oversight and advisory council. And um, makes some conforming changes in the tax statutes definition as well. It's my understanding there's no actual um, policy implication here, but using this same e liquid language. Um, and also just making some grammatical changes in that definition. Then section eight um, would have the office of the attorney general report back on um, whether and to what extent Vermont can legally restrict advertising and regulate the content of labels for electronic cigarettes and other vaping related products. That has been an issue of interest to a number of people and there is a lot of um, complexities around the federal law, federal preemption, and case law, um, including constitutional issues. And the act would take effect on September 1st. Okay. Jen, can Go I ahead. ask a question? So just in general, this bill would, um, ah, everybody moved, um, <laughs> would, um, would get rid of the violations about possession of tobacco products, but what about purchase? So it would not allow, it, it would continue to prohibit the purchase by minors. It does not address the purchase of flavored products. It prohibits the sale of flavored products. Okay. So the sale of flavored or the retail products. sale. The yeah, retail sale of flavored products, and that would include internet sales as well? So um, these products are not allowed to be, are already not allowed to be sold online direct to consumers. Um, that was something you enacted, I think it was last biennium, maybe okay. last year, last biennium. Okay. Um, so nobody can, can um, ship products ordered online to anyone other than a licensed wholesale dealer or retail dealer. Okay. So for regular, quote unquote, regular cigarettes, non-flavored, just the run of the mill cigarettes, it's no longer, this bill, it, according to this bill, there's no longer a, a violation for possessing them, even if you're- By minors, under, right. By minors. Right. Um, but purchasing by minors is still- illegal or there's a, yep. that's a, um, and retail sales to minors are, a, is right, a still not allowed. That's okay. right. So, okay. So it doesn't do anything with the purchasing. And that's something that the other committee um, is interested in looking at potentially, or has a bill that's related to. Right. There's right? a purchase use and possession. Some people call PUP purchase use and right. possession bill that is in the economic development committee. Okay, but this one only deals with possession, not purchase and use, or I'm trying to figure that. Right. Uh, just, this is just possession. This okay. is just possession um, and for minors. And retail minus. sale of, of flavors. And retail sale of flavors. Okay, got it. All right, 
Thank you. Okay, good. Other questions at this point? I mean, we have been through the bill uh, previously. And I, I did want to, I do have an interest in how folks are feeling about the bill at this point. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you want to do a little show of hands who supports passing the bill out of committee. Um, that would help me. I have a uh, question, Jenny. Yeah, go ahead. With your uh, other choice of sending this bill to economic development again. Oh. Well, I, I still want to know how I my know, committee I feels about the bill. The question <laughs> is, um, do you anticipate them including, you know, kind of melding the two bills, their bill? On I the have, I don't know, Senator Hooker, they may or may not. I, I think it, it would be, uh, um, I think it would be very useful to have that happen. Um, Just the, the, per, 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 the PUP provisions are kind of anachronistic. Um, and they capture people for doing something that, uh, you know, I think as Sen Senator Cummings and I have talked about this and it's the, it's the kid driving down the highway uh, smoking, being pulled over for smoking a cigarette. And especially if it's a, a BIPOC person, you, you have concerns about that. Okay. okay. Oh. Go ahead, Senator Cummings. You're muted. So as long as I'm muted, I can't chime in. Um, I voted for this bill last year with reservations. Um, the most reservations were around the sale to adults of flavored um, tobacco. And that includes grandpa's cherry wood pipe tobacco. Um, we did this prior to COVID. Um, it was sitting, waiting for next week in finance. Um, and since that time, what, who we didn't hear from this time to anywhere near the extent we did last year were the adult users of vapes and people that use vapes to step down and it's debatable, but there were a significant number of people. Uh, we had one retailer who was a firefighter and decorated and everything in his hometown who has moved his smoke shop to New Hampshire and is presently servicing all his Vermont customers a mile away. Um, this time, I'm not going to be able to support the bill with the ban on menthol. I, I really have a problem. A, history. Um, one of the reasons I voted for the cannabis bill was the testimony of teenagers that it was easier to get cannabis, i.e. there was always somebody in the parking lot than it was to buy alcohol because you had to get an adult to buy it for you. Um, we admitted when we did that bill, not that it was a good thing and it most certainly is not gonna be a good public health thing, but because prohibition didn't work. All prohibition of alcohol did was create a, you know, a, a huge explosion in organized crime. Um, Vermont being Lake Champlain being one of those conduits. Um, I don't see that prohibiting adults from making bad choices is going to stop them from making bad choices. It will just make them find other ways. My other concern is we did this bill pre-COVID I assume all of you were getting the pushback on mask wearing, pressure to get vaccinations. We have asked more of people, we've asked people to give up more in the last year than we have 
since World War II, at least, in the way of, you know, you, things you just can't do for the public good. I don't think this is the time to tell them when their stress levels are up and they've been making sacrifices for the public that now we're going to take away your menthol cigarettes that you, by the way, are totally addicted to and tell you that you've got to smoke nasty flavored tobacco and um, I, I just think the timing is wrong. I, I think people, and, and there's nothing in this to increase prevention or cessation services. I mean, we're, we're taking a crutch away and we're not putting a cane in there for folks. So I, I just, I, I have great sympathy and I will take anything away from kids. I have a concern kids are gonna move down the table to cannabis or back to pills, but I just don't feel this is the right time to do it. And I've changed on this one. Okay, um, thank you, Senator. Last. Um, well, I, it, I do wanna say that uh, if we look at the testimony that we've heard, we understand that, the, that COVID has increased uh, the use of these things and the public health crisis associated with it. We've also heard that kids are getting this so easily everything uh, from we don't know where but they're getting it uh, and in our conversation I'm buying it in Vermont they're they're getting they're getting they're getting it but they're not over the internet is what we have heard from kids uh, they'll keep getting up. it there so I'm the um, I haven't that when a child begins this process, they become addicted and those they become adults who are addicted. Mm -hmm. the, the issue around flavors is something that the cannabis bill took up and specifically banned flavors for the same reason that we are interested in banning them here. 30% of the can cannabis uh, tax revenue will go to prevention and that will include substance use disorder prevention overall and uh, nicotine. I, you know, so we can, we can agree to disagree on the timing of this, uh, but as, in terms of our awareness of public health, it's never been higher than it is now with, uh, with COVID. So uh, we hear you, Senator, and I understand that there are some passionate people out there who believe that menthol is helping them quit. The data and the supporting evidence is just not there. It just makes it easier to smoke um, because it feels good. But so uh, we're, we're actually over our allotted time today. I do wanna give everyone a chance to kind of weigh in We'll come back to this bill on Friday very briefly, and then uh, we'll 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 deal with it uh, and and see how it goes. I, I see uh, one vote against the bill, and uh, it would be helpful for me to understand how the full committee feels about the bill. Obviously, I'm going to support it, um, and I'm willing to listen. I have uh, to go well, to money chairs. Yeah, I we have another meeting too, but uh, Senator Terenzini, go ahead. Well, out of respect for, for you, Senator Lyons and the committee, and I can give my reasons as well on Friday. I know that we're over, but I, I but, too will be a no vote on this. Um, and I like I said, I want you to know today versus waiting till Friday that I'll be a no on it. So, you know, you, you understand the sort of the pulse of the committee. So thank you. I uh, appreciate that. So, um, all right, so let's, uh, let's call it a day uh, and we'll, tomorrow we meet, I'm sorry to do this to you, but 8 a.m., we're gonna have fun. <laughs> we have a full day of testimony on S20 and it will be a full day on PFAS. We'll, well, we'll see. I'll see you all then. Th thanks for hanging in there today. I think we've done a lot of good work. Appreciate it. Just a reminder it. that I'll be late. Yes. Yeah, Jenny, again, yeah. I'm 
I'm dealing right now with palliative care. I understand. Care. I understand. Okay. I'm I understand. not, and I can't get a time. So. Nelly, we